For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello. ...and the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Rick, you'll be pleased to know we've already had some responses. And uh, Simon and Mark have already emailed us in this link to something that was on the BBC News website. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's a remarkable story. Lion mutilates 42 midgets in Cambodian ring fight. That's, that's just the headline. That's a hell of a headline. That I mean, makes me want to know more about yeah, the story. Well, that's, what headline... that's what a headline should do. Spectators cheered as entire Cambodian midget fighting league squared <laughs> off against African Lion. So tickets had been sold out three weeks before the much-anticipated fight. The fight was organised when an angry fan contested Yang Shimoni, president of the CMFL, claiming that one line could defeat his entire league of 42 fighters. Well, the fight was ended, Rick, after only 12 minutes, after which 28 of the midget fighters were declared dead. Right. While the other 14 suffered severe injuries, including broken bones, lost limbs, and they were basically but unable the, to fight. But the anyone. lion wasn't hurt. It would have seemed that the lion was OK. Oh, Good. Well, that's amazing. Carl, what are your thoughts instantly? I mean, you're going to have a, a take on that. See, what's annoying me is I've sent money to Cambodia because apparently they're hungry and haven't got any energy. So what's going on? <laughs> well, it's, it's much easier to, to, to fill up a midget than it is a regular Cambodian. You know, they, mm, they, they're, they're happy on, like on a Mars I'm, I'm being cheated a bit. You were conned before with a charity, weren't you? Well, a few times, yeah. Were there, what about the, the old lady? What was that? I got stopped and it's like... Uh, they, they sort of drag you in by saying, have you got a gran? And I said, no, they died and that. It's like, oh, did they die of the cold? No, she's, you know, ill, what have you, just, just old age. He said, well, what happens with a lot of people's grands is they die in the cold, right? So I was like, oh, that's bad, isn't it? Anyway, so she's chatting and she's showing me pictures of these old women who look cold, right? Saying, look at her, that's Edna. You know, she's got no family, she, she can't pay the bills and all that. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, yeah. Anyway, it goes on for about 15 minutes and you, you feel bad. You give them your bank details, right? And what happens is, every couple of months, you get a letter from Edna. At least right. It's not from her, it's typed up and what have you. But, but there's a picture of Edna, right? And it's saying, oh, this December, you know, Edna's going to be extra cold. It's cold outside, she can't afford to pay the heat and what have you. Yeah. Keep going, right? So you keep paying every month, like, £5, or whatever. Get another letter a few months later, right? Edna's sat there. She's got a tan. <laughs> what do you mean she's got a tan? Well, when they said, you know, she's cold, I thought they meant for the heating, not to send her on holiday for a month. She sat there with a tan. I'm not joking. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't just a sort of a slight problem in the printing? No, no, definitely. Sure she, it wasn't she looked no, well happy. Sure it wasn't liver failure? You see, when, when does it become, like, bad to avoid people like that? Do you know what I mean? Because some people say you shouldn't, you know, they're, they're people, they're people like us, they've just had a bit of bad luck. Well, of course they are. Yeah, I know, but... I remember one on, on our estate, right, and she was a bit... What's what's the word that you can use? Because I don't want to offend anyone. But who, I'd, I'd say... Me, men, yeah, but sort of mental homeless. Is that a term? <laughs> That's the official term. That's, I think that is the... That's that is the, the new yeah. official term. It's it's mental homeless-itis. Right, so she uh, she lived on the estate and what have you, and she aged... Pretty... How was she homeless if she lived on the estate? Well, she sort of decided to stay around there because I think All people right. on the estate spoke to her more than people who had money. So this mental homeless woman on mm. the estate, um, and what she used to do, right, she, she acted quite normal, and she used to always push, push like, a pram around with her, right? Everyone was like, she can't have a kid, can she? Right? And she was dead happy every day. She was up and down, walking up and down the road. Anyway, one day she got to walk past, right? Turned round and looked in the pram. There was a bucket with a face on it. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, we've had an email here from a bloke. I think you're going to respect him because I think you can tell straight away from his name mm. that he's the kind of guy you'd want to hang out with. Go on. I know how much you love fun people. Yeah. Well, Paul, and he's calling himself this, Paul the Party Animal Parker, he's emailed in. He's given himself that, that, that moniker. Uh, 
Right, I, I assume they're in sort of like quote marks. They're are in, they? in speech marks, yeah. Paul Brilliant. Party Animal Parker. And he's calling himself that. Yeah. That I, I can't wait. So I, what do you, when you picture him, what are you thinking? Millhouse. <laughs> right, OK. I, I, I think he looks like Millhouse from The Simpsons. Yeah. I, 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 he's I, working I, in sort of an IT department, maybe? Yeah, for possibly. a large organisation? Oh, I think he might still be at school. <laughs> OK, right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think. And, and this is the vital question. Do you believe him to be a party animal? I believe him to be a party animal is as much as a man with a long scarf that is mum knitted him <laughs> to look like uh, Doctor Who can be a party animal, yeah. yes. Do you think that when people are organising parties at his school, they're thinking the first person they've got to get on the list and make sure he's guaranteed... Uh, as You've got guess, to take Paul the party animal. Because I, I, I bet he's got millions of affectations. I bet he's, he wants to be known as the one that carries around a biscuit tin. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, yeah, he's, yeah, got, yeah. he's got the scarf. He's, he's the got... guy who only ever wears bowling shoes. <laughs> it's his thing. <laughs> it's his thing. <laughs> he's a little bit kooky, it's his <laughs> thing. And uh, it is fairly interesting what he sent in. He's found this on the web. A Serbian man who um, has invented a sex machine for women. Hmm. And he's appealing to Western women to test his device. Hmm. It runs on a 390-volt electric engine, simulates sex, and has a 7.5-inch artificial penis. As soon as I read this, I was thinking... It's just imagining there going, oh, thanks for coming in, yeah, OK. So there's, uh, what's going to happen is there's a penis that's going to pop out from here and it's going gonna, it's gonna to have sex with you. I'm going to stand behind the machine... <laughs> I've got to stand behind here. There's a lot of dials and stuff. I don't well, want to bore you in. Well, why do you have to stand behind it? Just I can't. It's technical stuff. But I got to be behind the machine. But there's no there's no penis on the robot at the moment. It's just no, a hole. That, don't worry. <laughs> what happen is I'll switch the machine on. I'll go behind, and then a penis will appear. Will it be like a metal looking penis? It will be a robotic penis, but it will seem like it's a regular fleshy human penis. So you've made this sort of like robotic penis look really realistic. It's really realistic. You will not be able to tell the difference between, say, the robot one and mine, for instance. You OK, well, you I don't would... want to see yours. No, 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 there's absolutely not. Because, because I'm not, I've not come around here to have sex with a person. I know, you've I'm... come around to test the machine. Yeah, I'm that is exactly a... what you're going to get. Okay, a lovely well, piece you... of m- mechanical action. That... <laughs> That's it. To a lot of people, sex is important, isn't it? You know what I mean? Not to you. Well, it serves a purpose. <laughs> but, but what... <laughs> what purpose? No, Because no. you don't want to have kids, so what a purpose? Just, just you know... Something to do in the Something evening. Something to do, innit? When the telly's broke. But, but for years, like, they've, they've found stuff, haven't they? Machines from, like, Roman times, that no. to that setup. No machines in Roman times. Like that, though. The old sort of uh, knob on a stick machine thing. <laughs> The old that? Roman I knob on a stick. I'm sorry, but I Aqueduct. watch Time Team every week, and Tony uh, Robinson has never done uh, that. Uh, an old knob on, a, knob on a stick machine. I just think of Julius Caesar sitting down and go, OK, Aqueduct, we love that. Yeah. Thanks for that. Straight roads, good idea. We can see the enemy coming. Yeah. What have we got there? Well, I'm glad you've asked. Plumpticus. <laughs> what have we got there? W- w- Wanklicus. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what I've got here <laughs> is a yieldy knob. Um, and I've, I've put that on the end of a stick. Oh, a stick as phallus. OK, well done, <laughs> yeah. Michael. No, no. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. You um, are my new right-hand man, as they say. No, no, no excellent. Problem. But they do, they do do stuff like that. You've been in uh, the London Museum and that, and they've got sort of sex stuff from years ago. They've got, like, these metal pants that they used to wear. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> metal pants? Yeah, sort of Is metal. that a chastity belt, you mean? They used to make women wear them so that they could... No, yeah, but they had, they, had, they had them for blokes as well, though. Metal pants for blokes. Yeah, Why? I just, no, I just think they sort of like sexy metal pants. <laughs> what, oh, I don't know what you mean. What are you sexy metal about? pants. Well, they'll have to look because they haven't got it in front of me. It's just something I remember seeing some sort of sexy metal pants that I used to wear. But what are you saying, sexy metal Come pants? Because well, that was not British be... Museum. That was Soho. No, what, what I mean. <laughs> that was Old Compton Street. You were looking at the shop window. They always had to be ready for like battle and that, but these were a little bit sexy but protective at the same time. <laughs> I love that. So, Lancelot, are you ready? To face the Black Knight? Yeah, just, <laughs> what do you think of these? Huh? I Will just there, want to look good on the battlefield. Will and... there be women watching, cheering us on? Well, you're not going to fight like that, are you? What about with your, your chest? I'm going to wear your... nothing except these sexy metal pants. But you, what about your chest is exposed? No, yeah, I can... well, it's a good chest, I'll be working out. Yeah, I know, but what I mean is you want, to, you want, you want metal been, all I've over. I've actually been lifting up the round table <laughs> every week. I just work out, do that about four times a day. But that <laughs> machine, right, why... Did it have to be a woman or could they have got a little gay fella in? I, I don't know. Let me just check. Um, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't actually that. specify the small print here. Yeah. I love that. Why do you want to see a little gay fella be... I don't know. I don't want to see it. I'm just saying they're sort of more... Why do, uh, uh, Carl, why do you want... I don't want to see Why it. do you want to watch want to a gay it. man get buggered by a robot? I wasn't the one typing in gay machines on the internet, finding <laughs> stuff out about it. It's not Steve a gay was. machine. 
You just made it into a gay machine. Yeah. He, he, right. wanted, to, he wanted to pleasure women with this machine. Oh. You're saying, can I see oh. a little gay fellow get a robotic cock up his arse? <laughs> You're the one requesting that, Carl oh, Pilkington. I don't want that. I'm just saying that. You're the one that wants to see gay men with metal stuff up their arnus. No. Oh, what I'm saying is they're more up for a bit more experimentation than... What are you saying? Why is that the case? Why? Why do you say that? No, just, just, they, they just, you know, butt plugs and that. I mean, what I'm saying is... What, what, you can't just say butt plugs and that. It, I'm just it, saying that they, I reckon they'd be up for it. That's what do you know I'm about saying. butt plugs? I, well, I don't know anything about them. I, I just remember seeing an advert for some once in a sex shop. <laughs> what, are you doing? what are you doing? No, I wasn't. I was just walking past. I was walking past a sex shop and that. Mm. And you know, you're sort of looking. What, why, why, look. why were you walking past a sex shop? Just because I was on the way to work and that, and I passed one, and there okay. was a little sort of one. It was open early, which I never understood. Right, it was about eight o'clock in the morning. Right, and who's I thought, rushing, who's, who's rushing out? Yeah, morning, who needs yeah. them now? Right, yeah. but I, sort I must of get a bagel and some poppers on the way to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I walked past it, and it had a, like a little post-it note or c- postcard type thing, and it was like popping now, buy an item, chucking some free butt plugs. <laughs> And I, I didn't know what they for. I didn't. I've, I'd never heard of them before. But all I'm saying is, I've since found out what they do do with them. What and do they do? And if they do them? do that with them, then yeah. give them a go on that. <laughs> Add another email here. It's an interesting fact. I'm hoping it's true. America's first nudist organisation apparently was founded in 1929 by three men. Now, what intrigued me when I read that? is the fact that it's clearly three blokes just trying to meet some nude women. They're all 52 balding. <laughs> exactly. With little, uh, uh, sort of those gold rim glasses. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just wandering around, and it's all quite saggy down there, and they're just knocking on doors saying, we've just set up an organisation. It's perfectly above board, completely yeah. legitimate. It's a, it's a nudist organisation. Um, you got any women in there that want to come and join us? Because we haven't got really. any female members at the moment. Got any women in there interested in, you know, volleyball no, or trampoline? I can't, I, can't, I can't be doing without me. You hate nudists, don't you? Nudists. I, d- I don't understand what what it's all about at the end of the day. And here's something, right? Do you know, like, when you're a bloke nudist, mm. right? Do you ever get any who just have like a small knob? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand the question. What's that? What's your point? Well, you know, are there any blokes who are knocking about who just have a, a normal sized knob or maybe a bit smaller than a normal? Um, <laughs> uh, who, who are happy wandering about showing off? <laughs> What what they haven't got, if you know what I mean. I don't think nudists are just doing it because they're so proud of their knob. <laughs> no, but there's got to be a little bit of that in it, isn't there? Just saying, most blokes who, you know, nudists, mm. they must be pretty confident in themselves to, you know... I, I looked once. What? Where are you going? What is this? It's natural, that's what I'm saying. What do you mean? This is Carl, Carl takes a sneaky look at no, menscocks.com? No. No, what I'm saying is, <laughs> it's natural. Where was this happening? You're in a, so you're in a gym. No, a lot of guys are getting changed, and no. you're just checking you're, out their you're, you're, you're at your bedroom window with a pair of binoculars. <laughs> no. and there was a little fella across the road getting I was, changed. I was at some night out once. Go right? on. So you were um, at heaven, and you were in in the toilet. It was some night out, and uh, some some people come running on the stage. Right, some music started coming on, and these four people ran out. It was two women. So two you're at blokes. a gay strip club. It wasn't gay in that. It was just a normal night. Out. Well, you know, some sort of party night out. Right. These these people come running on, right? you got two women, you got two blokes. Right. They whip the knickers off, the fellas whip their undies off. At the same now, time? Yeah, all at the same time. Was it like, like, a, that, was like, it like a choreographed thing? So Go that, that happened, and all I'm saying is, right, before I had a look at the woman's bits, right, I just had a little cheeky glance at the fellas. Why? Why? Just checking it out, just seeing is everything normal down Why there. Why weren't your eyes drawn instantly to the ladies' bits? I, I, no, I, don't believe me, I had a look at that. All I'm saying. But you went to the guys first. Just, just. I didn't know how long pants were going to be left off for. <laughs> so you didn't want to miss your opportunity, is what you're saying. You saw a window of opportunity to see some men's bits, and you thought, "I better take it." No, no, because this may never happen again. No. But... So what happened? So you, you, there's there's two look. women, two men, right? Um, I don't know what sort of event this is where you're looking at anyone get their knickers and pants off. I don't know why you're looking at all. Night, so huh? you go, you go, right? There's knickers and pants off, right? Let's check out the the, the 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 knob and testicles first. You're telling me you've never like when you've been in a gym or anything, you've not just sort of turned your head, had a look, and gone, all right, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. So let's just get this question right. Have we ever been in a gym and just taken a sneaky glance at a man's genitals? Is that your question to us? Right. For me, it's the same as when you see someone who's a bit odd 
two ads or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be honest. If I was in a gym and a bloke came in with two ads, I'd look. I, well, I'd try. I'd get a sneaky glance in the mirror. I'd go. Oh, sorry, but you'd look at his genitals or his two heads. His two heads. Or would you sneaky look at the heads and then think, I wonder if he's got two cocks and just. <laughs> I know, try and look there. If, 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 if I tell you what, and now I admit it, if I'm ever in a gym and a naked man with two heads walks in, mm. I probably will check out the genitals as well, just to make sure that he's got two of everything. Can I tell you the thing that always freaks me out? I do sometimes go to the gym, and I live in North London, and the thing that always freaks me out is if there's a, a an elderly man, often quite short, mm. um, I'm always freaked out because there's at least two I'm aware of who've got very, very large penises. And I always find that really disturbing because I sometimes you can't you know you can't help but notice because it's like Godzilla coming through the <laughs> change room. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so so that go. I do admit that's the only instance where my eye has been naturally drawn to it. Do you know what annoys me in gyms where people walk round happily naked all the time, whistling? Yeah. They get weighed naked, pop a towel on, and take off yeah. three ounces. How exact have those measurements got to be? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Pop a towel on. I mean, yeah. unless you're going on the space shuttle. <laughs> yeah. I reckon you could give or take a couple of uh, couple of stone. Yeah, couple exactly. Of yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Well, we've we've put that to bed. Carl, can I ask you a question? Go on. I know this is what a lot of the fans are already wondering. Is there going to be some monkey news today? There's yeah. got to be. Close there is. Yeah. Yeah. That's All right. Question. Well, I don't want. I, I'm worried because maybe this will steal your thunder. But uh, Sarah has emailed this in uh, a chimp mauling under investigation. I know oh. you're concerned, because this actually fuses two of our greatest features, monkey news and knob news, oh. into just one, into one seamless hole. Oh. Investigators said they are trying to figure out how two chimpanzees that viciously attacked a visitor at an animal sanctuary escaped from their cage. This is the grim bit. The chimps chewed off a man's nose and severely mauled his genitals and limbs. Why oh. did they go for his genitals? Both of them did as well. Eh? Both of them. Did you say two chimps? Uh, no, you're right, yeah, it was chimpanzees too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if both of them went, they just saw that they're dangling away and they... Uh -uh. they you got for the nose? Yeah. Uh -uh. Mm. I got for his bollocks. Uh -uh. Then, what, what accent have they got there? I don't chimps? know. Were they kind of New York gangster <laughs> chimps? They're like <laughs> soprano <laughs> chimps. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened to them anyway? Um, well, unfortunately, they were shot dead by the authorities. You see, oh. that, that annoys me a bit. I know, well, again... What are you talking about? They're attacking people's gonads. I know, but they were happy in an African jungle a couple of years ago. That's what yeah, they do, isn't it? That is what they do. But why aren't they just sort of tranquilised? Where what, was why this? Why have was I this been this accused like it was my fault? Just because <laughs> I happen to be reading... Sarah, who emailed it in, thought it should be getting a volunteer. It just annoys me how one way it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> we're trying to save the pandas, and then the next day someone's shooting them or whatever. I've, I've talked about this before, about St George killed the last dragon, right? All right, it didn't exist. <laughs> it's the same thing, though. No, no, there was, there's never been any dragons. No, it's a mythical creature. Well, you don't By know By mythical, that. it means we made this up, like the unicorn. Mm, well, I, I... I don't even... What was your point about the dragon? What's that got to do with because this? Because I'm, I'm saying now, like, why is it all right to be going around, going mental with a gun, shooting all the monkeys and killing them? Because one day we're going to run out. This or, was an animal sanctuary, though. So presumably they had quite a cushy time there because most of the ones I've visited, they've always got it easy. They're but hanging around on tires, they've got comfy chairs, they're wanking. <laughs> <laughs> they're going berserk, they're loving it. But hang on a minute, you've just answered your own question there. You said they're in a sanctuary, so they haven't had a good upbringing. So they're going to be a bit more like madder than other monkeys, aren't they? Because that's where the ill ones go, isn't it? Isn't it? Sorry, what do you understand by sanctuary? Well, I've been to one for seals. It's not like a borstal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He thinks it's a borstal. He it's thinks like scum. That, no, yeah, yeah, that, that they did some bad stuff in the jungle. <laughs> exactly. And that they had a little monkey core, and they went, <laughs> send him to borstal. Yeah. So, well, what is it, then? No, it's a monkey sanctuary, where it, it, like, like a haven. Well, it's not right. a haven, is it? They've got a bullet in the head. <laughs> Talking of... Uh, Eating knobs. Carol Thatcher, you know, a daughter of uh, one of our leaders. Sure. Well, you saw it in I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. She popped a couple of bollocks in the mouth, oh. chewed them up, swallowed them. Oh. Kangaroo uh, penis there, dried. She couldn't even get... It was so tough, she couldn't even get through it. And then she... <laughs> eventually, she <laughs> eats it. What, was it like a pepperoni? Yeah. And she said, what do you think of that, Carl? What, eating that sort of stuff? Yeah. I just... I mean, I, I, I watch it. I like those little trial bits, right? Yeah. But... What what I don't think people realise is, right, it is hard eating a little kangaroo knob. Right? Really? How do you know? 
No, it's just, you know, you think about it and you go, oh, I couldn't do that, right? But what they never mention on the TV programme, which I think takes it to the next level, right? They're eating that at, like, half past seven in the morning. Sure. <laughs> right. Which is worse, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If 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 I was there and Ant and Dec said, right, Carl, eat the knob, I'd go, hang on a minute, give us a few hours, <laughs> let me get some rice and that on my belly and just sort of fill me up a little bit more. I'll pop back at about half six this evening. Right. Have it ready. <laughs> And I'd, I'd be happier then. It's just it's just that thing of, you know, you, you just you, you don't want to eat you don't eat animal genitals on an empty stomach. So what are you saying? You could... I'm, I'm I'm saying like I, I could eat I could eat a knob at night, but just cut that there. We will loop that. If any if any uh, DJs are listening, no. um, just take that quote. I could eat a knob at night uh, by Carl Pilkington. No. Maybe do a, a, a dance remix. Yeah, just I, maybe you're sort of a house producer and you could maybe get some kind of high energy beat going, and then we could oh, just but... send that out to some of the gay clubs. I'm yeah. sure it'd be pop- really popular. Please, please, anyone, send us you know uh, uh, that that looped with a nice little you know uh, funky house beat. Carl Pilkington saying I could eat a knob at night. Rick, it's that time again. It's what everyone's waiting for. Can you do the jingle for us? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, you... Right, this week, the monkey news is about, you know, we all know, like, you know, there's monkeys knocking about that aren't happy in, right, this, in yeah. this country. Sure. It is a big problem, that. yeah, it's an epidemic. So they've, they've set up, like, this, uh, this place... OK. ...where they all go... The ones that aren't happy in a zoo and what have you, it's getting them down... <laughs> Um, they can phone a number and they'll come and pick them up. Pop them in this this house place, right? And basically, they they can run riot in there. Yeah. They get freedom to sort of cheer themselves up. There's three people running this place, right? So these monkeys, big house and that. PlayStation, uh, anything they want. Gym, all that lot. Gym. gym. One of them wanted to mess about with the woman's breasts. Right? Which woman's breasts? The woman who works there. Right. Mm. Right. And... Um, she was like, right, pack it in, you know, we've all had a bit of fun. Um, <laughs> you've been sure. in the gym and everything. She obviously, you know, got a bit excited. He's a bit and fired that. Up, he was yeah. fired up and that, ready yeah. for some more action and that. He's trying to have a go on, on this woman's breast, right? She was like, have no. a go. She was like, no, you're not doing that. Pack it in and all that. The boss who's running the place was like, uh, come on, let him have a go. No. Right, you're talking shit. So, so anyway, right, so he's there. And he's, so the uh, boss says, yeah, you the can have a group. Saying, yeah, the boss is saying, let him have a Come go. on, Rita, if Monkey wants to play it with nipples, <laughs> let him. So she's like, I'm not happy with this, and he's going, come on, you know the rules here, we've got to cheer these monkeys up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we've got this to, is absolute we've fun. Made it. Actually, no, and, and uh, in the end, because she didn't allow it to happen, the fella bloke sacked her, got someone else in. I want to see the advert he put in the Guardian oh, oh. media page. I love that. Right. Woman wanted to let Chim feel tits whenever it wants. <laughs> well, it's all up there. You're talking absolute shit again. Well, we'll see. That is no way mm. that happened. Mm.